live. This is News 10 to Lake today on your side. Early this morning, a St. Pete Beach City Council meeting runs into the early morning hours where the back and forth over the trade winds expansion goes from here after more than eight hours of discussion. And a brush fire is still smoldering this morning in Highland County. Stood there and we said we are so lucky. We could have had nothing to come home to. Why officials are allowing neighbors nearby to return to their homes. And the possibility of going from the pools of UT to Paris. The Olympic dreams for two University of Tampa swimmers. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Hey, we'll get to those stories in just a minute for you. Going to start off, though, with your Tuesday forecast. Emily Spann, you can definitely feel the heat starting to build. Not quite as crisp and refreshing as it was all weekend, even yesterday morning. Now, it's not uncomfortable this morning. I mean, it's 58 degrees. This is in Riverview. The Urban Recycling Camera kind of zoomed into downtown Tampa skyline. Dew points are in the mid 50s, but starting to creep up. So when you look at the difference, you're either about where you were this time yesterday or a little bit warmer. Tampa's two degrees warmer, Brooksville's four degrees warmer, but in Sarasota and Lakeland, you're basically exactly where you were yesterday. Just not quite as crisp when you go outside. So I will still give this fantastic scale an eight out of eight. It's gonna be warm this afternoon. We may get up to 86, which is also warmer than yesterday, but I don't think we'll see very many clouds. It's gonna be that nice warm up, about a 20 degree warm up during the day. Tonight, we fall back down about 77 by 10 o'clock and then back into the upper 60s when you wake up on Wednesday morning. Look what happens on Wednesday afternoon. We're a little bit warmer and that humidity keeps increasing. I'll let you know when that finally leads to some rain chances coming up. All right, thank you, Lee. Well, new this morning, after more than eight hours of discussion, St. Pete Beach City Council decided not to vote on plans to expand Tradewinds Resort. Public comment ended at 1245 this morning, and the discussion will continue at next week's meeting. The $500 million expansion plan would take place over two decades. Neighbors are concerned it will cause overcrowding, traffic, and emergency response issues, but resort officials disagree. It's not just about being quaint, it's just about how do you start, how do you prevent the problem of overcrowding when you just have, you know, different groups bringing everything in and then they're all going to be fighting with each other because there's just going to be more people being brought in at one time. The traffic studies have been done. The roads can handle the traffic in phase one. We'll keep, we would continue to work with the city to review how the impact actually happens once phase one is being done. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to have more on reaction to last night's meeting. People in one Sebring neighborhood, they're back home safely this morning after being evacuated due to a massive fire. Officials say that fire is 100% contained, but it's still smoldering. The fire started on Sunday in the area of Kenmore Street and Granada Boulevard. Investigators tell us thankfully no injuries reported or damaged structures. Homeowners in the area, though, they say they are thankful first responders were able to save their homes. They were knocking on the door, evacuate, don't grab anything, evacuate. And I was in panic mode. I could see the flames so, so close to the backyard, I thought our house was gone. The firefighters, the EMTs, everyone that worked out here, we give our heart and soul to them because they saved so many of our homes. Crews will be in the area for several days while that fire is still smoldering. Better call bank and getting results for a Pasco County woman who says her Dodge Ram truck was just damaged when it fell from a tow truck. Cecilia Igretas called roadside assistance through her insurance when her Dodge Ram wouldn't start at a gas station in February. As it was being loaded up the Ram, uh, loaded up the Ram rolled off of the tow truck, causing more than $10,000 in damage. Egretta says her insurance company advised her to file a claim and let them recoup the money from the tow truck's company's, tow truck company's insurance company. When that didn't happen, she called Shannon Bankin. Then when it was finished, I took my $1,000 down there, and ever since then, I've pretty much been blowed off. It's been, we're waiting, we didn't get the paperwork, we don't have this. Nobody wants to take responsibility. The third-party company who arranged the tow service says a check is in the mail for her $1,000 deductible and her $600 rental car reimbursement. Well, today, Sarasota County holding a meeting for neighbors to learn about upcoming changes to trash collection. The Solid Waste Department is dropping their current provider, Waste Management, and moving forward with FCC, Environmental Services of Florida, and Waste Pro of Florida. Today's meeting is being held at Gulf Gate Library in Sarasota at 6 o'clock. Another meeting will be held tomorrow night. The new trash collection services begin next year. 
The time now is 437, and right now two local college swimmers, they are hoping to compete on the global stage. This is very exciting. Two students from UT are competing for spots in the Olympics. And on your side, Chloe Sparks live on campus now with more on this. Good morning, Chloe. Good morning, guys. The swimmers are going to be here shortly. They're up early this morning, training for their chance to compete in the Olympic. Now the swimmers are getting ready to be here at the facility shortly for swim practice. You'll get to hear from them later on in the newscast. Reporting live in Tampa, Chloe Sparks, 8 on your side. All right, thank you, Chloe. And New Channel 8 is your home for the Olympic Games. Eileen Nechik will be live in Paris all throughout the Games. Opening ceremony set for July 26th. 438 on this Tuesday. Here's Lee. Uh, it's a really pretty morning. It's mild, not too chilly, not too warm. I'd say it's a little Goldilocks out there when you go outside. 63 degrees in Lakewood Ranch right now with a light breeze. So you probably, uh, by 8 a.m., you might want some long sleeves in a couple of places for like an hour right when the sun rises and you will need the sunglasses, 66 degrees. But we're all in t-shirt and shorts by your lunchtime when it's 81. And then transitioning into tank tops and sandals at 4 p.m. with a high of 86 degrees. Now, we are adding in some humidity. So I've kind of broken down the actual temperatures I'm expecting and then how hot it could feel. So today's actual high is 86. It may end up feeling like 88. Tomorrow, a degree warmer at 87, but higher humidity. So we may have that feels like temperature close to 90. Looks like we could be close to the temperature wise as, as far as feels like on Thursday. But look at this, 89 feeling like on Friday and Saturday, which is about a degree above what I'm forecasting for 88. So for Saturday, it's going to be certainly a warm one out there for the Tampa Bay Caribbean Festival at Perry Harvey pa Senior Park. Getting hot even by lunchtime on Saturday at 85 a spicy sunshine for you 87 degrees maybe feeling a little more humid by saturday extra clouds around rain chance though at least less than 10 percent all right house traffic all right it's early so you know you're likely going to be fine if you're headed out over any of our major bridges or bay area interstates i will say this on the howard franklin flashing lights up there there is a crash that's reported and i want to take you down to the maps to show you specifically where this is you can see that it's definitely on the st petersburg side of the howard franklin bridge it's actually in the northbound lane so as you head from pinellas over to hillsborough county your drive times northbound are fine you see the green there on the map but you do need to take it nice and slow and as long as those crews are out there, we will let you know if your drive times continue to climb there. In Clearwater, Olmerton Road right here at US 19, there's a crash reported there. Another situation where it's early, just not a ton of people on the road. Give yourself five minutes to work around any crews that are out there. Back here in Hillsborough County, there is a crash reported much earlier on on 50th Street. We'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. Back to you. Thank you, Beth, for protecting young adults from the dangerous impacts of alcohol. The numbers revealing growing health problems from drinking too much in today's Head Start on Health. And a South Florida man facing charges for driving his car into a deputy's home. What he decided to do next. And this space junk right here fell through the roof of a Florida home where NASA says it comes from. Traffic sponsored by Honda of Sarasota. Experience the difference. From up here, we can see all the winning plays. The Golden Diamond Source supports all the Tampa Bay sports teams. With year-round championship excitement, you don't want to miss the Gem of the Week. The Gem of the Week every Sunday on Super Sports Sunday at 1135 on News Channel 8. Max Defender 8 Weather is sponsored by the Law Office of Catania and Catania, putting families first. It's worth repeating, Catania and Catania. Welcome back. A Lee County man is facing charges for crashing his SUV into a deputy's home and then firing a gun. Deputies say the suspect fired at least 10 rounds after smashing through the garage door over the weekend. No injuries were reported and the gunman was quickly arrested. Investigators believe this was a targeted attack. Well, in your head start on health today, April is Alcohol Awareness Month and doctors are tracking a concerning jump in the number of younger patients developing alcohol-related liver disease. The number of cases among patients in their 20s and 30s is sharply rising, especially among women. Now, the disease typically has no symptoms in its early stages, but can eventually lead to fatigue and unexpected weight loss. According to the CDC, deaths caused by excessive alcohol use jumped 29 percent between 2017 and 2021. Doctors say more people turned to drinking during the pandemic, and the numbers have stayed high, including among underage people. In 2022, 29.5 million people ages 12 and older met criteria for an alcohol use disorder. We don't treat alcohol the same way as we 
think about other drugs like cocaine and tobacco even and uh, education is, is key. A lot of people don't know what safer alcohol intake looks like. Well, doctors tell us only 7% of people struggling with alcohol addiction actually seek help. There are a number of resources available for that help, and that includes dialing 211 for the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. The time now is 446, and right now sea turtle nesting season is underway. And here's a list of things you need to watch out for before you plan on heading to the beach. So take your trash with you and fill in any holes you make and knock down any sand castles, all to remove obstacles for the hatchlings. Do not interact with the turtles and do not touch their nests. Keep the beach dark at night. That means no flashlights, no camera phone lights. And if you see an injured turtle, make sure you give Fish and Wildlife Alert hotline a call. Well, imagine sitting in your living room and space debris just falls through your roof. Yeah, NASA's confirming one Florida home was hit by debris from the International Space Station. This is a look here at that debris. Officials say it fell through the roof of the home near Naples last month. The piece of space junk weighs just under two pounds, and an investigation will now determine how that debris survived the re-entry to Earth. Not something I would want to interrupt my day. No, I, I, the insurance company is going to say, what? What? So I'm glad NASA confirmed it. It is 448. Taking a live look right now along the yeah, in Lakeland. This is the Lakeland Hyundai in Polk County. Yeah, got some people out early this morning. 64 degrees, nice and mild. And it's dry. Max Defender 8 is going to stay dry for the foreseeable future. We don't have a lot of rain coming anytime soon. As far as when you compare yesterday to today, some of us are a little warmer. Brooksville, you're four degrees warmer, but Zephyr Hills, you're actually a degree cooler. So it doesn't feel too different than when you started your Monday. Let's talk to my weather watchers. We got Brenda and Crystal River at 61, Joyce and Trinity at 68, Mike and Winterhaven at about 67 degrees. So as we head through the day today, if you're trying to exercise or do the yard work, all that kind of stuff, you got to do it soon because we heat up real fast. Thankfully, overall, it's not too humid. By noon, it's 81. Warm afternoon at 86, that's above average, but it should still be mostly sunny even at 7 o'clock when it's 83. I wanted to show you the afternoon temperatures really across the board because what you'll notice is we don't have much of a coolness along the coastline. I think we have a strong enough east breeze that we don't get the cool sea breeze. So it might be a great day to go to the beach today because it's even going to be warm there. Basically, everybody will be making it into the mid to upper 80s as we see those winds out of the south. So that keeps us warmer. It keeps the humidity building. But it also keeps us rain free because before these cold fronts were swiping on through, right? Well, now they hang out, push to the north. We continue that increase in humidity. In fact, our next rain chance isn't until Monday of next week. And even that's not very high, just 30%. So until then, warm and dry. How's traffic? All right, there's a couple of crashes sprinkled here and there around the area. This one in Tampa happened much later last night. 50th Street right near Dover Street. Florida Highway Patrol still saying they have crews out there, so go ahead, be careful as you work around them. They should be getting cleared out of the area really, really soon. The other thing that we have, of course, is construction going on. In Polk County, I-4, these are the eastbound lanes right near County Road 557. You can see they're squeezing traffic down as they do have some lanes closed in that area. Definitely going to slow you down a little bit, but as far as your drive times go, not really reflected there, right? As you head eastbound, you can see just some minor delays from the Polk Parkway to 557. Then it clears out as you make your way towards Osceola County. Back to you. All right, thanks, Beth. Manatee County leaders, they are holding a special meeting today. Why they are concerned over illegal immigration and how it impacts first responders. And the numbers being released from President Biden's tax returns. In an 8 on your side, Consumer Alert, a new study ranks our area as the best large metropolitan area to find a starter home in the state and the sixth best in the entire country. Construction coverage looked at factors including what percentage of starter-sized homes are actually available, how big mortgage payments are compared to income, and how many people under 35 own a home. The top-ranking area was Pittsburgh. Congrats to all of them. 4.55 is your time on this Tuesday morning, taking a live peek outside. We're back with more news, weather, and traffic in just a moment. Closed captioning, sponsored by Famous Tate. Tampa Bay, you've made a name for yourself. Championship sports, a booming economy, and a lifestyle that makes this the place to be. But the secret is out. More people means more challenges, and it takes work to get through them. That's why we're getting answers and finding solutions. Tampa Bay, your next chapter is just getting started. Let's write our story together. News Channel 8.
is on your side. Well, the Lightning are turning their attention to the Maple Leafs after last night's loss to the Buffalo Sabres. The final score was 4-2. to two. The Bolts take on the Maple Leafs tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at Emily Arena. It's the last game of the regular season. Coming up next at 5, a meeting over the Tradewinds Resort expansion runs into the early morning hours, plus an opportunity to weigh in on the St. Pete City budget. We also look at a special bond between two key Bucks players, and Eileen Natchik speaks with the U.S. women's soccer team ahead of the Paris Olympics.